Hi folks, thanks for joining us today on the Decoy Shed. We're shooting an on the mantle segment at the Peoria Riverfront Museum in Peoria, Illinois. We have with us today Kristen McKenzie, who is the Director of Collections and a Senior Curator here at the museum. Kristen, thank you so much for having us today. Thank you Could you tell us just a little bit about the museum overall? Sure. We are a brand new museum. We opened in October of 2012, and we have four disciplines, art, science, history, and achievement. So we have contemplative galleries dedicated to art, our permanent collection and folk art, of course, where the decoys come in, history, and then we also have the more exciting and dynamic exhibits that we're in right now, the Illinois River Encounter, the history of the river, and then um, the Illinois High School Association uh, Peak Performance Center. Terrific. Approximately how many visitors a year are you guys uh, receiving? Well, of course, we haven't been open a full year, but we're hoping for about 200,000 visitors a year. Terrific. That's wonderful. You mentioned the Illinois River Encounter uh, exhibit. Yes. Can we go in and take a look at that? Please. I've got lots of decoys to show you. Super. So, Kristen, we're now in the Illinois River Experience exhibit. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Well, there are two parts to this gallery. One is the Living River, and the other is the Working River. The Living River side starts with the formation of the... Uh, Illinois River Valley with the Kankakee Torrent. Then we come to the various types of habitats along the river, the hunting tradition, fishing tradition, and then we end with uh, preservation, sedimentation, the care of the river. The working side, of course, has to do with locks and dams, travel along the river by barges, flooding, um, and all of that kind of thing. We're in the hunting part right now, of course, and we can see this wonderful large display of decoys, working decoys for the most part, with a wonderful interactive for our visitors to attest their knowledge. Can they identify the different species of decoys? So Kristen, this is the interactive portion of this display. Can you tell us a little bit about how this works? Right. Well, what it, it has to do with the center portion of the display. And as you see there, you can touch the screen to begin anywhere. It doesn't matter. And then it brings up a, an image that matches the central display here. The idea here is to select a decoy, any one you want, and then you can identify the species. You have three choices, and if you pick the, co the incorrect choice... Now, I'm going to be embarrassed if I don't pick the right one. There but. you go. Sorry. Try again. And once you hit the right one, then you get an image and the Sound call. Sound effects. Yes. Terrific. And a little, a little bit of information, too. We try to have some uh, interactive materials throughout the galleries. We've now moved from the Illinois River Experience to the Folk Art Gallery. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about this display? Well, I, I want to say, too, that decoys are one reason that we collect folk art. And we started collecting decoys in about 1986, after our first exhibit in 1981. And we have, I believe, the finest collection of Illinois River decoys that anyone can see in a museum. That's terrific. Can you tell us uh, approximately the number of decoys that you have in your collection? About 168. Wow. Yeah. And uh, as far as the carvers, is it uh, a few carvers or do you have uh, examples from a variety of A little carvers? over three dozen carvers. We'll have all the major ones, but we actually are interested in collecting the less known carvers as well. I'd like to have an encyclopedic collection if possible. So from a curator's perspective, that's very important to you, is to have good examples of the, the range of carvers it in It is. Area. It is. And then um, we also talk about how decoys were made as well as how they were used. So we're trying to tell the whole story. It's a lot of history here. We're not looking at these just as works of art, which they are, but we're also interested in the whole cultural context. Uh, and is a collection like this unique uh, to the Peoria Riverview Museum, or are there other museums in the country that have similar type collections? For Illinois, I think we're it. There are certainly other collections on the East Coast that have a, more, a stronger emphasis on that region. Um, and then there are smaller collections in some other museums in Illinois and around. But I think we, this is what makes us different Oops, than any other uh, museum. Pat Gregory is joining us now, and I'm going to ask him a couple of questions about uh, the collection and how uh, collectors and carvers can leverage uh, these type of collections to their benefit. So, Pat, what do you think? Well, as a carver and collector, it's always a thrill for me to come to a place like this uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, um, you know, uh, being an Illinois River carver, um, you know, this is the largest composite public collection of Illinois River decoys there is. So as a carver, as a collector, when I want to come and study prime examples, I'm coming here. 
Um, you know, you've got the top four um, carvers. You've got uh, Purdue. You've got Graves. You got Elston. You got Walker. And so, um, you know, it's difficult um, to see live prime examples of those if you don't have them in your collection, or you know, if uh, um, you know you haven't been to a show. So, when I want to come study uh, the masters, you know, I'm coming to a place like this. Uh, primarily as a carver, as a, as a, uh, or as a collector, I'm sorry. As a carver, I want to come here and study the style, you know, because where else will you have an assembly of as many only river decoys as you do as a place like this? Are you seeing any uh, examples here that you, that you just wouldn't see uh, anywhere else? Well, um, another strength in a collection like this are the rare examples. For example, uh, you know, Charles Purdue Ringnecks. I've seen two pair in 30 years of carving and collecting, you know, but to be able to come here and see, you know, a pair of a Purdue ringnecks is a real thrill. Um, it's also uh, interesting to see, you know, the pattern, how he painted them and so on. So, so that's a real strength in an exhibit like So Pat, this. one of the things that you were just mentioning was the fact that uh, when you're studying these birds, you can see differences like styles and uh, the way paint was done. Sure. And one of the questions that comes up very often for collectors is how do I tell the difference between birds that Edna Purdue painted sure. and Charlie painted? Sure. So can you give us some uh, tips on that? Yeah, well, just overall, uh, Charlie's paint was very bold. It was just very bold, uh, very um, concise, whereas, uh, you know, very, uh, like his, his uh, feathers, for example, he outlined every one. Edna's paint on the other hand, was very soft. So, so take these two bluebills. On the left is Charlie's paint. On the right is Edna's paint. Very soft, very subtle. You know, you know more of what you'd think a, a feminine brushstroke would be. You know, very blended. Charlie's, on the other hand, very bold, uh, very distinct, very definitive. Um, from a collectability standpoint, of course, everybody likes Edna's paint because it's softer, it's more muted, it's more natural. Um, but you know, basically. The difference between the two is soft and subtle, you know, blended, bold, distinct, and and and, and just more forthright in terms of painting, and, and you see that in the brush strokes. Okay, let's step over to the case and take a look at a pair of mallards that Charlie painted uh, uh, to, to highlight the sure. example of a pair of mallards that Charlie carved and painted. Sure. So can you point out just a few of those uh, uh, things that you were mentioning, the bold strokes, that type thing? Absolutely. If you look at the back and, and even the side feathers on this bird, they're very bold, they're outlined, uh, you know, just a very distinct brush stroke. You know, if this were Edna's paint, it would be a lot more subtle, a lot more blended, a lot softer, you know, just a, 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 a lot more appealing, really, a, a more appealing paint job. Uh, whereas, again, Charlie, uh, because of Edna's health, she had to give up her um, painting of his decoy. Folks, thanks for joining us today, uh, this episode of On the Mantle at the Decoy Shed. We're going to close out the segment in front of this very rare Charles Shane Hyder uh, goose. It's one of 12 in existence. It's currently on loan to the museum uh, by Mr. Tom Figge. Uh, Kristen, thank you so much for having us today. We've had a great time. If you're ever in this area, stop by the Peoria Riverfront Museum and take in what they have to offer. I want to take this time to uh, thank our sponsors, Hook and Hunt TV and select screen printing. They keep us looking good and keep us on the road. So join us next time in the Deep